Welcome back, listeners, to another episode of The Snake Pit. I'm your host, Son of Bat, and I'm joined with Son of Phantom. Today we're covering another documentary, one released or distributed by Troma, directed by Lech Kowalski, uh, who is also the director of DOA, which is an amazing punk documentary. i got to recommend to anyone who's into punk music or the NYC or UK hardcore scenes. But today we're talking about Story of a Junkie also known as Gringo, and this is, uh, like I said, distributed by Troma Entertainment, and it's basically about the uh, drug use that was running rampant in the mid-80s or the late-80s in the East Village of New York City. A lot of the cast members and crew, including John Spacely, the main junkie in this movie, were real heroin addicts, and this movie depicted real heroin use. There were some scripted scenes, but for the most part, this is a real documentary about drug use so um yeah take it away phantom what did you think of this movie this movie was messed up well done grungy it was shocking and it was like just gross throughout like the depiction of new york was incredibly grimy and there the living conditions of just so many blocks like like, there were some really cool scenes where he like goes oh skateboarding hang really high and they show uh, oh you different places all over and it's just it's messed up everywhere it's oh it's a depiction of like late stage heroin abuse and it's not pretty it's really really dark honestly like yeah you said it yourself it's a very dark movie physically dark too like a lot of the scenes were like just pitch black like the the character new york city was as much of a character in this movie as john spacely was it was just everywhere you looked it was just harsh even the scenes that were in the daylight were just utterly void of color just super depressing grimy we see um you know various drug addicts talking about how you know they get through life how they acquire the next hit the kinds of things that go on in the drug trade this is uh before the crack boom by a couple years you even get a a rap song in here the message by i think jam master j or something i'm gonna get ripped apart for fucking that up but the song's the message which was crazy because it really shows you before the crack epidemic what you know junkies were like they weren't really doing the crazy like shit like there's robberies and stuff like there was a stage robbery in the movie but like it was mostly people nodding out and passing out and then you know two years later the shit just boomed into like insane violence and craziness but um you know this also captured a lot of the uh, punk aesthetic too kind of like with the original documentary by let kowalski doa that i mentioned uh this guy john spacely also known as gringo he was a staple in new york there was a giant mural of him so everyone knew him there's pictures of him with like the bass player from the misfits there's pictures of him with i think iggy pop and definitely with sid vicious so he was a staple in the punk scene and uh yeah this movie was punk to the fucking core it's one of the better trauma releases in my opinion like it's it's serious though it's not like a joke um any anything else you want to add on it like like out of the troll movies you've seen so far, where would you rank this? Like, did you, like, you know, yeah, yeah. Like, what would you have to say about I, it? I found it was, I thought it was going to be a lot less serious. I found, like, how they dove into what true addiction and true, like, hopelessness in heroin addiction. It was really, you know, like, intelligent and informative of the con- of the condition of not only you know heroin addiction but their living conditions in new york at the time and just it's it's like it's kind of a moving movie like it's it's just fucked like it makes you think about how nice it is to not be a heroin addict <laughs> <laughs> oh man it's a really messed up movie and they depict like there's heroin being used like every five minutes i would say in this movie it's and no like there's no bars held everything is just shown um and like you just get a bunch of monologues of these drug addicts like hey just absolutely out of it with these drugs like it's brutal brutal movie Oh, yeah, you know, speaking of being completely out of it with, like, fucked up drug shit, there's a part where, um, like, I didn't catch it the first time around. I caught it the second time when you pointed it out. There's a part where um, Gringo is shooting up a recent batch he got, and it's, shit's cut with Nesquik powder because it's, like, brown, like the brown heroin he's got. 
was fucking nasty. Some of these shoot up scenes are really long and grotesque. And honestly, if this is a PSA to like nail home not using heroin, then yeah, man, it did the fucking job. This movie just kind of made my stomach turn at points too. It was like, you know, it was just, it's real. Like, it's not like, it's not like movies coming out where they kind of fetishize or glamorize it like that euphoria shit on TV. Like, this was just, this is what it is. Um, although I do have to admit, the original poster that was for this movie that I'm looking at right now, it was really cool in a Mondo slash exploitation sense. Like, you looked at this original poster, it was kind of like Combat Shock, where you look at this poster and you're expecting a exploitation, like, version of train spotting or something because it's this juiced up dude and a needle breaking in his arm with some prostitute staring at him it's not that like you know it's not that i guess glamorized it's not like a movie it's just like nah man this is just some like malnourished dude who would later get aids and die from his addiction just skating around trying to get hit from hit he's like offering to roll joints just to get a heroin hit he's fucking like you know he gets caught up in a shooting like all this crazy shit and um it's been rated as one of Troma's better movies, and I think it has to do with the seriousness that was put into the movie. It's like Combat Shock. Honestly, this and Combat Shock are two of my favorite Troma movies because of how out of the Troma box they are. Um, uh, it really, really shows the breakdown of this guy, like even throughout the movie. Yeah, and, it, and the depiction of uh, like real uh, coming down off of heroin, like the being dope sick scene is an amazing scene in this movie and it really it really captures how awful it is like his explanations and monologues are like my favorite part of the movie honestly yeah. they're really really good yeah no and everything he was saying is like you know as, as someone who's like you know as people have partied in our day and shit like we can attest it to a degree that some of the descriptions of things this guy was saying were very very true which made it really scary because it's like it's almost like a hive mind being an addict like no disrespect but it's almost like a hive mind mentality where it's like these people were rambling stories about the government and shit like the same kind of rants you do when you're like totally zonked out they were saying similar things like and like had the experiences of what it felt like it was just crazy surreal it's like but seeing this it's like seeing the bottom of the barrel and it's like luckily no one here has hit the bottom of the barrel in that sense and it's it's just it's just a dose of reality. That's what you're getting with this movie. Combat Shock was a dose of reality, but that was a movie. I feel like if you double featured both of these trauma movies, or if you showed someone these two trauma movies at first, they'd be like, "What the fuck?" But like again, that's why I like this one and Combat Shock because it's so outside the box. And I mean, I love Toxic Avenger, Poultry Guys, and that stuff. But something like this out of left field is pretty fucking wild. Mother's Day was a good one too, but. I, I, like, I don't know. These documentaries are harder to find, too. Like, Killing of America, I felt this was on par with Killing of America. It was just disturbing, but it got the point across, and it was it was well-made, and it didn't feel, like, in poor taste. Like, it didn't feel, like, exploitive for something that was borderline trashy, if that makes, like, any sense, you know? Yeah, like, it wasn't, it wasn't trashy, per se. It was really bleak throughout. Like, they didn't try to glamorize heroin abuse which i really liked like because like i find a lot of the movies about heroin and make it seem like this awesome great thing that's super fun and it just it shows you this community of like it, maybe 15 people throughout the movie and all of them and maybe not all of them are messed up on heroin but they're all just all about the cocaine dude. oh the cocaine guy is a crazy one he's just staring into the camera with these milky eyes like dead eyes and he's just like elated talking about coke for like a minute and a half straight he just keeps repeating the same things Co i will never give up on coke i will never stop doing coke all this great drugs i don't regret ever starting i'm gonna do this for the rest of my my favorite it's fucked up as it he just looks dead with his fucking fist under his chin like a philosopher he's like cocaine is my hobby and it's like holy fuck this dude in this like dirty white disco jacket just bugging the fuck out talking about how much he loves coke like a million ways the same thing over and over it was just crazy like um i will never stop doing coke <laughs> oh my god like and i don't mean to laugh like it's not funny it's just it's like it's a shock you know what i mean because like phantom was saying and like you know i was saying with the euphoria shit all these drug movies like you know for every good one you get like requiem for a dream or like spun you get something that like borderline fetishizes it like that movie with steve corral with his fucking kid or whatever who's a drug addict like 
they did that with the heroin shit where they fucking fetishized it where him and his girlfriend shot up and then fucked in the shower and it's like dude like this movie it was he shot up nest quick multiple times his vein rejected it and he puked up black shit in a toilet like it was like it made me fucking sick bro and i wasn't even doing drugs like why it was just brutal um one of the things though that i can't find a like a definitive answer for is it says this came out in 85 on imdb but it's also saying it came out in 87 on a lot of the sources so i i don't really know when this came. it could have been filmed in 85 and released in 87 they put the title story of a junkie on it but in the credits it's called just gringo but um yeah, this was a really good documentary by Troma. I can't praise this enough. This was a really good shockumentary. It kind of makes me want to check out the Berdella documentary they did. Hopefully, that's as good as this. But um, ranking this on a 10-point system, um, I think I'm going to have to give this about a 10. This was really, really fucking good. This is the kind of documentary I'm looking for for the collection. Uh, I recommend it to anyone who's you know, trying to see some like real shit. If you want to see some like Mondo New York type shit. If you want to see some... like like actual real life drug addiction shit unlike uh black metal veins which is great up until the end where they put the fake shit in yeah i recommend this 10 out of 10 um if you can find it get a copy it's well worth it it's not going for super expensive prices so check it out phantom what would you rate this i think this is a really great movie a really great documentary that you know gets its point across in like a very blunt and direct way that I enjoyed. I would. Uh, I'd have to give this a nine. I really like it. It does. It's not like wowing to me. It's not like super deep. But I would recommend it to anyone that's you know interested in this type of thing, or you know if you really want to get a look onto why you should not do this drug, watch Story of a Junkie slash Gringo. <laughs> Or if you want to see a look at New York in the 1980s, or if you want to glimpse at the punk scene in that time period and the dr drug addict scene in that time period, check it out. But yeah, this was the review for Story of a Junkie. We hope you guys enjoyed. If you want to hear more videos like this, more trauma, more documentaries, more uh, exploitation, trash, 80s shit, whatever you want to call it, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for uh, checking this out. Thanks for the subscribers we do have so far. We appreciate you guys. Have a good one. Peace.